Baba Ali Show, Episode 6, How Not to Make Dawah. A phrase you often hear from converts is, Alhamdulillah, I was very fortunate that I found Islam before I found the Muslims. The reason why is because you look at Islam, it teaches one thing, and then you look at the Muslims, and they're doing something completely different. Even when it comes to giving da'wah, the way some people do it makes you scratch your head. You end up scratching your head so much that people actually think you have dandruff. Don't worry, you don't have dandruff. But I'll tell you what you do have, a podcast on how not to make da'wah. And guess who's here to help us? Eddie from the Dean Show. Let's do this. In a world where cultural Muslims have confused the masses and speakers are forced to be politically correct, rises one man, one voice, who changed everything. Hey man, why are you all serious? This is just a podcast. <laughs> Let's talk about Welcome to the Baba Ali Show. I'm your host, Baba Ali. Many years ago, I was on a bus heading to a Muslim camp trip. It was an opportunity to get away from the daily routine and learn more about prayer, basic principles in Islam, and develop better character. Interesting enough, I ended up sitting next to someone on the bus who was probably thought I was a curious non-Muslim coming to the camp to learn about Islam. The thing was, I was already a Muslim, but I guess I didn't look Muslim enough because I wasn't wearing cultural clothes. Yes, I said cultural clothes because wearing jeans and a t-shirt doesn't make you any less of a Muslim versus someone who's wearing like shabula kameez. Nevertheless, the brother was excited because I guess he learned about Islam recently and he wanted to convert me. <laughs> As he was trying to tell me about Islam, I interrupted him in the middle of his pitch and I asked him to prove to me that a creator exists. He was kind of stunned. He was caught off guard. He didn't even have an answer. Then I told him that I was Muslim and I showed him how to intellectually prove a creator exists. So what do we learn from this whole experience? First things first, there's no compulsion in this religion, so you can't convert anyone. Second, you should never judge a book by its cover. Just because the way I dress doesn't tell you that I'm Muslim or not. Sometimes you can't tell easily, and sometimes people are going through different phases in their life. Finally, before you go around trying to convince people about Islam, you need to be intellectually convinced about it yourself. The way you carry yourself is oftentimes more important than the words coming out of your mouth. You see, there's a lot of Muslims making da'wah, but some people do it in a way that actually pushes people away from Islam. And I'm not saying he did anything wrong, but some people could be rubbed the wrong way, right? That's not really effective. We're going to tackle the subject with our special guest today, Eddie from The Dean Show. For those who are not familiar with The Dean Show, it's the first Muslim talk show in America. Eddie has a wide variety of like Muslim scholars, speakers, celebrities, and just normal Muslims who've accepted Islam and they share their amazing stories on what made them want to become Muslims. So it's actually quite inspiring and hopefully inshallah we get to like pick his brain and see what he's learned hearing all those stories and at the same time what he's learned through his own experience as well. Welcome to the Baba Ali Show. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah Allah be upon you. Thank you for having me on the show. Jazakallah khair for being with us today. And Eddie, you know, you have a very popular show on television. And then you also have it on YouTube. And that's quite popular. Like almost every Muslim that I know that as soon as I say the Eddie from the Dean Show, they know exactly what I'm talking about. So there are some people that may not know about it. So can you tell us a little bit about the Dean Show? Uh, MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah. Thank you for having me on your program. The Dean Show was started back in 2006. And the primary goal of the Dean Show is to try to help clear the many misconceptions about Islam and also to deliver the simple message of Islam, the purpose of life, the meaning of life, to have people really ponder and think why they've been created, why they're here. And from a perspective of someone who was born in America, who lives here, who has been brought up here, and in a simple and easy format, in a, a way that people can relate to and understand. Sometimes people look at, okay, I just have to go and tell people about Islam, and that's enough. But how important is the character of the person who's giving that message? We know from following the sunnah, the, the way of the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, the same way you would have to follow Jesus during his time, Moses during his time, Abraham during his time, by imitating his way that he has said that I have not been sent except to perfect good manners. Mm. It's incumbent on a Muslim because we know from many examples and hadith that there will be a woman for example, who prayed all night, fasted, did so many 
acts of ibadah, but she slandered this person, but she wasn't good to her neighbor, but, and this can go vice versa for a man at the same time. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, had said, there's no good in this person, this person being the hellfire. You follow me? So it's very important that we have to hold ourselves to a higher moral. As the Prophet Sallallahu had said, the best of you are those who have the best manners, the best character. So this is extremely important to be of the best manners, the best etiquette, the best morals. All of these things is extremely, extremely important. So Eddie, let me ask you a question. When people browse the internet, they see all kinds of stuff. You see Muslims in one extreme and you see another Muslims in another extreme. Do you ever experience that as well? And these people are carrying the da'wah and they don't even know it. You see people doing things, representing Islam in such a harsh way, yeah. such a way that, you know, we get repulsed seeing this. Imagine with someone who's being fed by Fox News, all of this false propaganda. Now they see some some brothers now, big beards, screaming Sharia, Jihad, screaming all of this stuff. Now the people doesn't know, don't know what it means. You might have right intention, right? Yeah. But are you going things about things the right way? Absolutely not. Yep. And then we look, we we have too many, too many examples from the seal of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had told, he said, Oh Aish, Allah is gentle and he loves gentleness. He rewards for gentleness what he does not grant for harshness and he does not reward anything else like it. So being kind, being benign, having this good akhlaq, you know, not argue, I'm giving down and I'm arguing with the person, you know, cursing his mother, cursing his country. Is that going to bring people to Islam? No, that's going to chase people away from the deen. And unfortunately, a lot of these people do chase people away. And I don't understand how these people suddenly became our representatives. I mean, I didn't elect them. You didn't elect them. But somehow the camera is pointing at them and they're speaking in behalf of everyone else. And I don't think that's fair. Well, you see that happening now. You have an extreme element, doesn't represent you or me, and now very harsh, very heart-hearted, and doing things the opposite to the way that the Prophet ﷺ had told us how to do things, and now they're getting the spotlight. That's not right. Um, unfortunately, we're the ones, the rest of us, the 99% are the ones who feel the repercussions. We are the ones who feel what the results are from their actions. For example, many people who get stopped at airport security is because of the fear that these people instilled in the masses that is not accurately represent Islam whatsoever. And now we're the ones who are pay the price, unfortunately. So this is crazy. I mean, this is now we're talking about how not to do dawah when you have bad akhlaq. When you don't, you have good intention. But now what happens? You don't have the right knowledge and you're taking the wrong actions. And again, so many examples in the Sirah, another uh, hadith in Sahih Muslim where... The Prophet, last and final messenger, said to mankind, he said, he who is deprived of kindness is deprived of goodness. There's a time for this and a time for that. It's it's very, I mean, let's, let, let's talk about when this harshness, when this anger can come into something good. I'll give you an example. I was so proud of the Muslims in UK when you had these riots and now these looters were taking an opportunity to go and pillage and steal but the Muslims, and it was in the papers, they stood up and they were firm and they were guarding the businesses from non-Muslims, from Muslims. The community came together to scare off the criminals. Did you read about this? Uh, no, I haven't. That's amazing. That's amazing, isn't it? Yes, it is. So now now people were like, wow, Muslims came to the rescue. But now now you're going to go ahead and feed into the negative hype where you're out there, you know, cursing one's country that people have such a affinity to. You know, you're going to curse their country. You're going to curse them. You're going to swear at them and now you think this is going to bring people to Islam? No, this is the wrong dawah. Unfortunately, we have other extremes as well. Can you give us examples of the other side of the extreme? Now you have the other side Ali that's very unfortunate. Again, someone has a good intention but you don't have the correct information, the correct knowledge and now you end up taking the wrong actions. You have people who are just compromising compromising the deen and saying okay, you know what? It's no problem. You can go ahead and go and I'm going to go to the nightclub and I'm going to go in there. I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to dance. I'm just going to go in there and call people and give people dawah in the nightclub. What business you got in the nightclub, brother? <laughs> this doesn't work. It doesn't work. The logic doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. Is Allah pleased with this action? You know, there are certain things that are fixed in the deen. And there are certain things that are flexible now. That's the fix. But there are certain things that Allah has commanded that we, as those who submit to our Creator, we have to do. And we cannot change those things to a please and peace. Yes. The people. 
You follow me? When I first learned about Islam, I thought a lot of people were already practicing this. I thought what Islam says Muslims were doing. And in fact, it was the exact opposite. And it really, really surprised me that how Muslims had mixed up culture and Islam, and they called the whole thing Islam. And I didn't understand the difference between two. They were trying to teach me more about Islam. I wasn't sure what they're really teaching me because it was really hard to differentiate between the two. Did you find any of those challenges yourself? Yeah, actually, in the uh, beginning stages, you're so passionate and you know, full of vigor and just you, you want to do everything all at once. And you might have this good intention, but you learn with experience now to take things in moderation, slow down a little bit because, you know, many people, they put a lot on themselves and this being can uh, be very overwhelming if you're making it harder on yourself. So one of the things I remember that I quickly wanted to change was my name, for instance. So I, I like the name Hamza. And now I, everyone who came up to me who knows me, I uh, wanted to get to know me, etc. Knew my name was Eddie. I would have to correct everybody. So after about 50 corrections, people were like, hey, Eddie. I said, well, it's not Eddie. It's Hamza now. At the end, when I found out, I was like, I really didn't have to go through all that. You know, I didn't have to, unless your name has some bad connotations, it, you know, it's, it's something has a bad meaning. It's not necessary, for instance, to change your name. I meet a lot of Muslims who oftentimes are really, really excited about Islam and it took them a, quite a bit of time to transition over from being not practicing to practicing. And then they had these very high standards of what they expect people who are not practicing to switch over. Even though it took them six months to a year, they're expecting the, that person to do it overnight. What do you think? As long as someone is showing interest, we do our best you know, to show through example, obviously, and give people an example I give when you go to the gym and you go to work out and you don't just throw two 45 plates, the guy is never lifted the bench press you start out you start off slow he's going to end up getting injured so a little bit at a time and inshallah a lot of dua and uh, you know we learn about the prophet sallallahu and what really inspires us about his character and how he dealt with different people and he knew how to deal with those different people for example there's a story about the old lady or his neighbor that left trash in front of his house and she kept leaving trash and kept leaving trash and he completely was patient with her until the one day the lady didn't leave trash and he was actually concerned. So when he found out she's sick, he went and visited her and she was completely shocked at how a person that has been given trash over and over and over again has still the care to come and worry about me that something's wrong because today you didn't leave trash in front of my home. And how he dealt with her, she ended up becoming Muslim. She, right? She saw something special in this person, this human being. At the same time, there was a story about him and a wrestler where one of the greatest wrestlers, I guess, of that time or that area, the Prophet Sallallahu told him that if I beat you, then you know that he's the Prophet, that this is the truth, right? So the Prophet Sallallahu as an old man, beat this man not once, not twice, but thrice, three times. He showed to him that he is really the Prophet. So what did he do? Did he go wrestle the old lady? No. Did he wait for the wrestler to leave trash in front of his house? No. He dealt with each person differently based on the circumstances. And I think sometimes what we do is we find something to do regarding explaining Islam and we think it's a cookie cutter thing. We're going to deal with the same way, same style, and then go to each and every person and do it the same way. And sometimes we're pushing people away. I wish sometimes we Muslims were a little bit more considerate on who we're talking to. It's exactly, yes. One another thing that's very, very important is to prioritize. So in, when you're communicating this message, I had a real situation where I was talking to one of the um, members of a very prominent martial arts family. And we got to talking about religion and, and, and other things. And he was very uh, keen to know more about Islam. So I was communicating the simplicity of the basic pillars of Islam. And the number one thing that we need to communicate is the pure monotheism Islam, what's called in Arabic the Tawheed. Now a friend that was with him, he's not Muslim, but he was exposed to Islam by some Muslims. And now he started to ask me questions as I'm talking about the oneness of God. It's, 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 it's very simple and logical. And the human being who's sincere, who wants to know his heart connects to this. So we're talking and now the um, other person that was with him, he said, Eddie, why don't you tell him about the jinn? Now I'm like, <laughs> the jinn, okay. So now I don't want to be rude to him. But it's throwing me off. So I said, real quickly, I addressed it. Then I came back to what I was initially talking to. Then I keep talking. And then he says, Eddie, tell him, you know, when we enter. But after everything was said and done, what has what happens when Muslims had talked to this man, started to prioritize in the wrong way. You follow me? Started to tell him about every other detail of Islam, except the fundamental and the most important things. You have to know 
what to prioritize first before you start to talk about some of the things that might come 10th on the list. Sometimes someone is brand new to Islam. The first thing they go tell the girls, you need to get married. ASAP. And they tell the guy, oh, you need to do this, you need to do that. And the guy doesn't know anything about anything. And you rush him into certain things, you're actually scaring him. And they're not ready. You can't jump into certain subjects because it's way over their head. You haven't discussed Tawheed with them. Do you know what I mean? They're very, very important to know how to prioritize what comes first, second, and third. One another thing that's very important is if we're going to imitate someone, the best imitation is the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So even if you see someone, let's say, making some dawah videos, but the person, for instance, now you see them, you know, in the streets, dancing, jumping, you know, dressing like a woman, doing anything absurd and crazy just to get you to laugh, you follow me? And now maybe the person had made one, one video and that video, mashallah, it was good. But now let's say the other 50, 60, you know, are just things that are very questionable. You follow me? Uh, yeah. uh, it's, it's a very uh, important thing that we are able to distinguish who should we be mimicking, who should we be following, and who I need to step back and say, hold on, you know, if I'm taking the wrong people as an example, where's that going to, at the end, have me end up in my life? You can entertain people, but you have to do it within the boundaries of Islam. Because once you leave that boundary, then what are you really doing it for? If they're doing it for views, or they're doing it for people to like them, or they're doing it to make people laugh, that's your reward, right? So is it really worth it? I mean, here's a downside, and it's maybe some part that we really don't discuss. There's going to be a lot of non-Muslims that don't know anything about Islam, and the only time or the only situation they'll be listening to a quote-unquote Muslim video is yours. So if they're watching something, as you said, that are very questionable, you're accountable for that. And like it or not, even though you may say, I'm not a guy who's doing dawah, you are, but you're doing it in a way that you're doing it almost unconsciously. You know, I thought now maybe it's a good opportunity because you'll have a lot of youth who will be listening to your program that now they, they get to really think and reflect and not just fit in. Like many people who accepted Islam, they started to question. They started to ask and that's how they got enlightened. We don't want to just be those that are just, you know, one person screams, chases the, the limo and now I'm just, you know, a knee-jerk reaction. Follow me? We're, we're Muslim. We have a higher standard. We have the, the moral compass that we live by. So this is something that is very important in the da'wah that we are out there and as you had mentioned, that we're representing Islam in the right way, that we, we're connected to scholars of Islam, that we are, you know, making it easy for the people within the confines of Islam so we can be the, the right ambassador we can make a difference, that we can plant seeds of goodness in this life before we leave this life. With that, I would like to say Jazakallah Khair, Eddie, from the Dean Show to come to the Baba Ali Show. And can you give us some information where we can see the Dean Show for those who are interested? Absolutely. You can go to thedeanshow.com. And from there, you can go to our Facebook page. You can go to our Twitter page. And for those people that don't watch us on uh, the satellite channels, you can always watch us on YouTube weekly. A new show comes out. I know a lot of people who are big fans of your show. Very inspirational. With that, I'd like to say Jazakallah Khair for everyone who's been listening. Please go to BabaAliShow.com. Leave your comments there. We want to hear them and I'll try to respond to that in the future. If you are fans of the show and you like it, subscribe to it on iTunes. Jazakallah Khair for listening and I say Jazakallah Khair for my guest Eddie from the D Show for being with us today. This is Baba Ali. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The Baba Ali Show.